2022 is a very weird year. Not a very weird year, but... Questionary weird year. Um, SmackDown and Rampage, both tonight were back and forth in the sense of, oh, they want to be good, but sometimes there's some bad. They want to be bad, but there's some really good. I saw a toss-up between uh, SmackDown and AEW on Twitter. <laughs> but I won't talk about that. Uh, here is my review of Friday Night SmackDown. We got a recap of Raw and the celebration of Brock Lesnar. Happy New Year, good people, which was announced by Michael Cole on commentary. Uh, Roman Reigns came out for a promo. Looks so unfazed. Looks so chill. But do what you got to do. Say what you have to say. Acknowledge him. But there's no counsel. There's no special counsel. This misses. One week and it all falls apart. But when you're in isolation, there isn't much you can do. There's things you want to do, say, want. But he doesn't want to see Brock Lesnar or Paul Heyman. Cue Brock's music. And here we go. It's happening. I told you. Title unification at WrestleMania is most likely going to be the story that goes through this year. Universal title, WWE title. And Brock at awesome at just being who he is. First said, first did what he did. First did what Paul Heyman always does. Introduced himself and got right. And just said it. Said the title unification match. Let's have a title for title match. WrestleMania, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. Brock wants it. People want it. It's a good idea. It's a fun idea. But not Roman's idea. He doesn't negotiate with people who negotiate with trash like Paul Heyman. Until Paul Heyman... <laughs> until... Paul Heyman got a little bit irate. Said he loved him. Which Paul had to retract because Brock Lesnar kind of reacted to it. It's a lot of oh shit moments. The other oh shit moment was, don't talk to Paul like that. And Brock, don't talk to Roman like that. This was so fun. I, I, I mean, I literally had so much fun watching that segment. It's like, it's it's just the way that this story has been angled. For the past year and a half, Roman has been tied with Brock, uh, with Paul Heyman. Brock Lesnar has been away for a long time. Brock Lesnar has been away since WrestleMania 36, which was the uh, Performance Center mania. And he's been gone for so long. He's not done anything up until... Anything wrestling or social-wise. Until a video came out with him in a butcher shop. Having new hair. Having beard. And just having fun. And then he shows up at SummerSlam. Completely complicates it all. With Paul Heyman. Roman Reigns. Free agency. The match at Crown Jewel. The title match. Now Paul Heyman is rocking with, Paul, with Brock Lesnar. And now he's standing... Paul's back standing in front of Roman Reigns again. It's just so. That's all I can really say. More of that. A lot of that. Just chef's kiss. Uh, before the Sammy versus Rick Boogs match. Rick, Rick Boogs, Boogs match. He had a little interview backstage calling Rick Boots a gorilla with a guitar <coughs> and had a little run-in with Johnny Knoxville with Johnny saying that he wants to be in the Royal Rumble but 
He's not qualified enough to be in the Rumble match, was what Sami Zayn said. And then you got a little bit of Rick Boogs on the guitar, which was awesome. And Pat McAfee is a god at everything. I don't know how he does that. I don't know how he does that. Well, I'm a retired athlete who just got really wealthy. Give Pat McAfee a microphone and just keep him on there forever. It was a nice match. It was it was fun for what it was. And then the angle afterwards with Knoxville throwing Sammy over the top rope and then being entered into the Rumble. Not bad. It was not bad. I actually had a good time watching that promo. With uh, watching that, it was actually very funny. And Boo's got to win. Boo's. Uh, New Day cut a promo saying the last opportunity to win the tag titles. In a street fight, they feel deterred in a way. But basically, this was just a rundown of them saying that they're going to win the tag team titles tonight. Just give them a mic and let them say their piece because they can just have fun. Xavier, Kofi, Biggie, if it's one of the two, if it's two of the three, does not matter. They just know how to cut promos like gods. That's it. Uh, we got a flair for the dramatics. Cliche New Year's resolution to make yourself feel better when Flair's resolution was just to be champion. And then we got a reveal package of the Royal Rumble participants on the women's side. Rhea, Nikki A.S.H. Um, there's a whole list of people. Shayna, Natalia, and then the legend side is like Kelly Kelly, the Bellas, Lita, Impact Women's Champion, Mickey James. Michelle McCool, um, the women's rumble match, uh, the women's rumble matches are always good. Since 2018, they've always been standard level, some of the best, the best, best of the best. And 2021 looks no diff, or 2022 looks no different. Uh, by far, this looks like the most impressive field, and it's still not complete just yet. It's not complete just yet. And Charlotte has now inserted herself into the Royal Rumble. And what she said, she's going to be the first champion to win the Rumble and most likely choose her challenger to the championship at WrestleMania. <laughs> Which is awesome. Because now it's an even more stacked field, which is still yet to be complete. And then Naomi came out, interrupted Charlotte. <laughs> Uh, saying that she doesn't want to wait till don't wait until WrestleMania to defend your title. How about you defend your title against me tonight? To which uh, Charlotte said she hasn't been champion in two years, which was or years 2017 actually. And what have you done? That's it. And then we got Charlotte Flair versus Naomi in the championship contenders match, which basically ended with. Sonya Deville doing her stupid dumb shit of costing Naomi a victory every single time. I don't know why to this day, and I've watched for the last six months, since August, this has been going on, and we still don't know why. We still don't know the whole BS thing with Naomi and Sonya Deville, with Sonya Deville screwing over Naomi back and forth and back and forth, and they had a match already. You think it'll be over. No, it's not over. Uh, well, it's not over yet, and it sucks. It really does suck. But it was a it was a fine match. It was a fine match for what it was, with the stipulations even changing. Uh, Usos cut a promo saying that the New Day should be deterred to a Street Fight Rules match, and they're going to hit one, and they're one and done, and they are the ones. Uh, Happy Corbin. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. And then afterwards, Adam Pierce, backstage with uh, Sonya Deville, got a message from management saying that he needs to choose a challenger to Roman's Universal Championship by the end of tonight. Oh, dear. Um, interesting. Uh, we got happy talk with Drew McIntyre. That lasted just a little bit too long. And then the Viking Raiders came out for a tag team match. And then, uh, yeah, that was a tag team match right there. Uh, Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss won. But 
I do miss the uh, war chant by the Viking Raiders. Unfortunately, that's no longer to be. Uh, they in, they gave an update to Drew McIntyre's health, saying Drew suffered a cervical neck strain, to which Sheamus interrupted that to saying, cry me a river. What about Ridge Holland? He got stepped on and his nose was in a place where his head could possibly be in a different, where his head could be there. Oof. It was a it was a nasty nasty accident for sure. Uh, Hope Ridge Holland is okay for sure because this is another bad break. I mean, a, a severe leg injury and now this it's just crazy at this point. And now Sheamus entered himself into the Royal Rumble and I love the Royal Rumble so much. More people, more drama, more awesomeness. God, we got the Street Fight Tag Match, which was well, New Day Usos. What do you expect? This was another banger, a heater of a match, which involved some physicality up to the max. They went all around the arena, into the air, into the stage area. It was crazy. And then uh, Usos hit one and done. Afterwards, it was a fun match throughout the entirety of the night. And then I was the right decision to make the Usos retain for sure. Because I think they're going to do something with the uh, tag titles at WrestleMania. And I I pretty much uh, talked about it in my day one review. They might do a title unification match, maybe. With uh, Roman and Brock teased for that. There's also, like, the possibility that, that hey, may WWE, WWE maybe just, maybe be getting ready to put these things together and make something huge makes something of like well possibly ending the brands with but at the same time keeping the deals that they had with uh the uh networks but um it was a great tag team match then afterwards uh we got a familiar knock at the door for roman reigns for roman reigns sake and the challenger revealed for his title seth in Rollins. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Royal Rumble. The first time these two men will face one on one since 2016 in the Money in the Bank pay per view. After a barn burner and Dean Ambrose's cash in, <sighs> I am legit excited. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say the gauntlet match, but that was a gauntlet match. We're talking about one on one, straightforward match with uh, no added people. This will be the first time this two guys will face off. And it's heel versus heel. Seth is one of the best heels in WWE. Roman Reigns is the best heel in wrestling. The promo skills of both Roman and Seth. The chemistry that these two have. The bond that they still have. It wasn't long ago that they were the shield. You know. And I'm excited for this. I'm so, so... I, I literally have never felt this much genuine excitement towards a match of any kind like this in a long, long time. I really cannot wait for Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. And that's going to be, I believe, a 30-minute instant classic. Just like the Money in the Bank match. I don't know who's going to win that match. I, for one, hope it's Roman. But at the same time, I want Seth to win. It's, it's so crazy. It's so mind-boggling. Because you don't know how this is going to go. Because Brock's champion. But he's a free agent. Roman's champion, but he's on SmackDown. Could they possibly switch the titles? Because Seth was supposed to win at day one. <laughs> and they're running the Roman Brock feud all the way to Mania. Do you think that if they don't do title unification, they do Seth as the Universal Champion on Raw, Brock as the WWE Champion on SmackDown, and the chase builds, and the winner of that Rumble match on Raw on Raw is going to challenge Seth, and Roman is still going to face Brock by probably climbing the, climbing the top again to be champion.
but this time WWE Champion, which is a much better title than the Universal title. Hands down. Like, to this day, I don't know why the Universal title is, like, still this be-all, end-all. It's the WWE Championship. It's the company's richest title. It's still the oldest title in the world. Besides the NWA World Championship. Been around for 50-something years. About to be 60 years at some point. You gotta have, you gotta make something. I don't know what they're gonna do. That's why I'm so excited for the Rumble to watch the Rumble and to feel that energy, to feel that match, to feel the excitement that's gonna run back and forth. People are gonna be so stuck on who they want to cheer for, who they want to boo for. Because people hate Seth, people hate Roman. People love Seth, people love Roman. I love Seth. I love Roman. I'm gonna be neutral throughout that entire match. Roman wins, that's fine. If Seth wins, that's fine. I'm not gonna be mad at it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, overall, it's a great episode of SmackDown. It was drama. It was story. This Paul Heyman thing still is the best thing on the show. The Women's Rumble match is stacked. The world title picture is ungodly. It's unbelievable. Johnny Knoxville involved is pretty interesting to me. I have interest in that a little bit. And then there's also uh, the tag team. There's also questions within the tag team division. Like, man. I I don't know what to say. It was a great episode of SmackDown. I thought four out of five, not five out of five. Which was Smack O. But you can let me know in the comments using that rank system. Uh Smack No, Smack O, Smack uh, Smack O and Smack Where is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is, it? What is that? Smack down them. Or should I say smack? Don him. Shout out to the Pat McAfee show. Um, but yes, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of SmackDown. I'll leave everything in the description. Links towards the previous review video that I posted. I'll probably leave a link to my day one re uh, review. I did I say prediction? Review video from uh, Dynamite. And i also leave a link towards day one, maybe, in the description. Until then... That was Friday Night Smackdown, and that was absolutely awesome. What a start to the 2022. I can't wait for next week. Peace and blessings. Stay safe.